Their bones will wet my blade. Another body for the gutter. This blade's my favorite. Enjoy the taste of steel. Hey guys, welcome back. We are playing Talon today. One of the absolute strongest champions this patch. Um, it is an assassin who has super, super strong roaming potential. He also has super high kill pressure if you play him with Ignite. Um, live one, you can take your W, guys. It's your main wave clearing ability, and it can give you two stacks of your passive, right? Um, and you can get a total of three stacks on that passive, and then you can activate it with an auto tag. So you need to hit the champion with both parts of your W to get two stacks, and then you get the third stack with your Q, and then you proc it with an auto tag. So you can start progging your passive at level two. That's why this is one of the strongest uh, power spikes on Talon, that level 2, you can really pick up a lot of kills if you try to look for kills right when you get that level 2. Normal what you do is that you can either use the ranged Q, then use the W, hit both parts of it, and then you activate the passive with an auto attack. That's gonna deal a ton of damage. You can also start the combo with W if they're within range. And then once you see there are two stacks on the passer on them, then you can go in with a Q and then follow up with another attack. Select like the two um, combos you have before level 6. Now we also have level 3. We got that super OP roaming ability. We just hop over walls, guys. Um, they can hop over all walls and this is really what allows him to get past vision and also what makes him so OP. Um, Pretty much every season, um, he's been a really strong pick every single season. It is a champ that can 1 versus 9 the game because of how powerful his roaming potential is. Just constantly want to look for fights in the early game. If somebody walks up to you like this and just absolutely destroy them. We are playing with Conqueror because this is the meta build, um, so you're going for Gordringer. The absolute OP, most OP mythic item in this patch, Gordringer. What's really good is that it gives you wave clear as well because your W is normally not enough to clear out the waves and then you get that Gordringer active as well and then you can instant clear the wave, you also get a lot of damage and you also get a lot of sustain. So you get a lot of stats, even ability haste as well. We got the Iron Spike whip here. Um, of course, more burst damage to the combos, but also the wake clear parts of it, um, as I mentioned before. Above the walls here, when you get back to lane, all the objectives, just so you can get back to lane much faster. Um, the thing is, you can either decide to um, look for kills in the mid lane. If it is somebody who's trying to constantly fight you, then you can just stay mid, but if you're in a matchup where you can't really do anything mid, then you can just shove the wave and then you just look to roam. And since you can just top our walls, then you do not have to take the traditional gang paths, um, like going from river to bottom. You can hop our walls and really use that E to get past the wards, the vision. When we have Conqueror, then we have a lot more power in extended fights, but when you have electrocute, then you're only going for those short trades. Since this is a assassin booster build, then you always want conqueror with this build. But if you're going for full assassin, then you go for electrocute. So right here, it was really obvious that he was trying to um, wait for the Lee Sin. Sometimes you can just tell when you see them walk up for no reason. Um, but I ended up still being super greedy and that of course got least in a kill so that's a big mistake but sometimes you can really tell when the enemy jungle is nearby just by looking at the enemy champ and see if they played really safe before and then they suddenly start playing really aggressive then you know something's up that's also another way of finding the jungle without having wards down Almost level 6, the ultimate, the real assassination ultimate, it's gonna deal a lot of damage and also make you invisible. 
I also give you bonus movement speed, so that is what you use to burst down people with, guys. And remember that you don't always have to um, use it to kill somebody. You can also use it to catch somebody uh, with the bonus movement speed if they're within kill range, because it does give you a short burst of um, speed. If you just want to wait clear, then you can just um, make sure that W, both parts of it, uh, hits the entire wave and then you follow up with the Iron spy, Spike Whip active and then that should be enough. And this is what I meant early on, is that you can also use the ultimate to Sort of make sure that people don't escape from you. Um, if they're already within kill range and you don't need that extra damage from your ult, then you can also use it to chase people. Talon also works in the jungle. The build is the same. You can also just go for the Yumus Ghost Blade. Right now we are playing against a pretty tanky enemy team comp. They have set topside, they have Lee Sin. They also have the Nautilus, so this assassin Cruiser build is perfect in this case. So this is a champ that can really 1 vs 9 in the game. Um, if you play something like a Yone, you don't really have any thing to say in the early game, right? Because you need two items, you need deeper circles, you need the shield bow before you can really start doing stuff. But Talon is strong already from level 2 and 3 guys, so you can do a lot of stuff, you can help out your jungler, contest the skull crab, you can roam bot lane, you can do a lot of stuff in the early game. That's a champion that can impact the game already from the start, and that's why he's so good. Because games just snowball out of control this season guys, so if you're able to get leads early on, then you can usually use that to close out the games with. The Talon is a champion that will always be good in solo queue because champions with super high kill pressure and super good roaming potential will always be strong. That's just how it is. If you can't find any kills then you can just look to roam. You have that sweeper, you can use that to clear out vision with. If you for example roam to the bottom lane and they have wards then you can take those wards out and then you can get maybe get a successful gank on the next attempt. You see we did not get the last auto tag off, um, otherwise you would have lost a lot of HP. Very important that you proc the passive, um, that a lot of your damage is in that bleeding passive guys and especially when you combine that with the ignite that should destroy most champs 1 vs 1 in the early game. Even if you play against ranged champs then they should definitely start backing off as soon as you hit level 2 because everybody knows how OP Talon's level 2 is so that is not something you want to mess with. So this echo altered back to lane, that is of course also something you can do. You don't really want to waste your ultimate most of the time though on echo, um, especially not when you play against an assassin who has kill pressure on you, because that is your only um, safe. That's the only thing that keeps you safe in lane, right? Um, flies is not enough most of the time, but this echo's ultimate is. So now we have enough gold for the gold drinker. Absolute OP item. Um, in high elo, it's normal to see like four people will go drinker um, because everybody is just spamming at this point, even on assassins like the Talon, Kiana, and the set. So, abuse this item before it gets nerfed, guys. It's really OP and it really is going to give you a lot of free elo.
Now how it works is the same as with the iron spike whip is that you can use it to clear out the waves with and then you can also use it in a fight because it is going to heal you. The really OP thing here is that if you look at the cooldown it's almost up again. Like it has such a low cooldown that can be reduced with ability haste so you can actually just use it to both clear out the wave with and then also to you know in fights and such. And that Gold Ringer is actually the only reason I survived um, this trade right here. Got the healing, got to bait the Lee Sin out and he went down and we survived getting a tower plate as well. Really just securing a lot of gold for ourselves and Pantheon is going down here, I could not do anything to help him out. I was really low HP so they would just perma CC me into burst so no need to risk the fights. Um, you get the stuff you need and then you just get out. You can of course go for armor boots if you want to on the Bruiser Talon. They do have an AD top, an AD jungle and an AD carry so that would be great as well. But these boots give you really nice stats. You know the ability haste part of it. So with this Bruiser build you can get around 50% cooldown reduction, of course, depending on the exact items you buy. That's already more than you would ever be able to get last season. Imagine playing against an assassin with 50% cooldown reduction. Just how OP is that? You can just constantly spam the abilities. His Q and W almost have no cooldown. Same goes for his ultimate, so... By the time you find that AD carry, and kill them and then they respawn then your ultimate will be up again that's how op this build is and that's how op ability haste is on assassins as well also feels great to have some sustain and wave clear in that same item that's really op as well just constantly push out these waves, that's all you gotta do if you can't find kills mid, and then you just look for rooms. Just constantly roam the entire game. Like Talon is not a champ where you get like 7, 8, 9 or 10 CS per minute. You'll never see the highest ranked Talon one tricks having high CS per minute. The only goal is to Push the waves and then just roam. Just constantly roam the entire game, try to tilt people, make them go FK, and then there you go. That's your free low. Of course, this Bruiser build um, makes Talon even more OP um, because you can't really burst him down. Especially not AD carries, they will not be able to do anything whatsoever. And it also helps against those Bruiser or Tank compositions because some normal Talon will not be able to do anything against them, but this Talon can. Because you have more damage in extended fights and you're also a lot tankier. When you play this champ in team fights, you just wait in the corner somewhere. Wait for people to overextend. You're looking for the squishy target, so in this case that would be the Kaiser. But because Nautilus was so overextended, he was the only target we could reach, so we went for him instead, but normally you focus down the carries. That's your job as an assassin. You just instantly wipe out the carries and then your own AD carry should be able to carry the rest of the fight. You can also bait out a lot of people with that um, Gold Ringer active because um, people really do not expect the healing. They really don't. And especially not this early on in the game, where most people do not have anti-healing, then Goldringer is really insanely OP. And then if you want, you can also get the Xerx Gage and then, yep, just completely unkillable. In this game here though, they have a double bruiser, so they have set top lane, they have Lee Sin, in the jungle and then they also have a tank in the support role so we can go for the black uh, the cleaver here that armor pen is really going to help out quite a lot 
against these targets but if you're playing against a more squishier team comp then you can go Gordringer and then into Yumus Ghostblade. Because uh, Yumus Ghostblade gives you lethality so of course it's a lot better into squishy comps but it doesn't even it doesn't only give you lethality, it also gives you a ton of bonus movement speed so you can make sure that nobody escapes from you. And if you look at the enemy team comp, they actually have a ton of shielding. They have Zs, they have Echoes, they have Nautilus, then they have Lee Sin as well, and then if they get Xerox Gates, then they also get shielding from that, so... Urban's Fang is the perfect item to buy this game, so we're gonna go into... Lordringer Cleaver and then straight into the uh, Serpent's Fang for that super heal destroying item. I really love to have Serpent's Fang use us on the team because it feels so great in fights. And even though the lethality part of it gets countered by defense items, it really does not matter. As long as you can nullify the shielding, you know. Make the shields much worse than it is worth it. Also remember to um, take down the jungle camps guys because um, they buff Talon in the jungle right so he's able to take down the jungle camps much faster so as a mid laner you can also take down the camps and really put yourself further ahead. This is the mid game and you're pretty much only looking to um, roam the entire game. So just go to the side lane, then you clear out the wave and then just hover in the enemy jungle. Wait for somebody to walk up, you know, maybe the AD carry will walk up to those um, cannon minions. Those multiple waves taking up. Not maybe, they're 100% gonna do it and that's why you can like camp in a brush and then just kill them, right? So you just want to hover in the enemy jungle the entire game. Make sure you have the sweeper, so if they're wards, then you will spot them out and clear them out as well. Get a flanking position and then find the priority targets. And because you're playing the Bruiser version of Talon, you're not gonna go down in a single fight. Super tanky. Extremely tanky, very hard to burst down. And this is why Talon He's so OP at this point, guys. This is exactly why he's so OP. They will be nerfing the Gold Ringer build soon, so you should definitely abuse it while you can. Um, this was the video. Thank you so much for watching, and see you all in the next one.